Soviets and Soviets of the Red Army, how y'all doing? This is Connell Work. And I'm Rang Roo. Hello, hello, hello. And folks, uh, after Tuesday, like I said, we wanted to bring you another Hollywood replay. Today on Orsha East, Rang, who is fighting and what are they bringing? Well, on the left hand side in blue, we have ourselves Alexandra playing as Ski Jaeger with Vanguard Income. And on the right hand side, we have Sean playing as 84th Guard Rifle Division. With a balanced income. Indeed. Now, with the Ski Jaegers, of course, we've gotten to see them a little bit before. Tell me again about what to expect here, because we don't see them that often. Uh, German Light Infantry Division. Uh, no skis on the troops, unfortunately. They kind of left them at the base. They got uh, the captured KV-2, some T-34 captures. Very light and anti-air, but they got some fun airplane options. A lot of good strafing planes. But yeah, they're pretty much more of a later infantry division, so expect some smaller troops, but with better veterancy and equipment. Can we talk about the fact that there's seven Dushkas being brought on then? Seven Dushkas? Yes. No. Oh god, Jesus. That is some... Is this like the Toyota Wars? I, I wish I could tell you. I'm just trying to figure out the idea behind it. Is that just supposed to be... I'm going to sh uh, shell all of your infantry since I think you're not going to have enough tanks to stop it. I'm go I'm guessing he's going to be using them as just like close-range machine gun infantry support platforms instead of dedicated anti air which isn't a terrible idea because they're only 10 points. 10 points for 50 cal. That's not bad. That's not too bad. It's not too bad, but it's not too good either. I yeah, mean... it's just... It's right. We'll see hey. if it's just right, I guess. Well, where are they going? Um, no, they're all positioning themselves to the north central. Put that's is it? It's such a unique breakout. That's a, probably the most polite way I can put it. I'm not entirely sure what he's thinking, but um, we'll see. Maybe he's gonna like try to charge him up the hill to get like at northern small village on the tip of the hill. I'm, I'm guessing, but I don't know. I'm really curious to see how it will play out. Yeah, outside of that, I mean, much more, you know, steady deployment on the other material here. Uh, down in the southern side, of course, we have ourselves a lot more of that Nishtamaviki or the Machiki kind of material. Um, but there's an awful, you, you know, wide amount of infantry to begin with. So, I mean, we have, you know, the Vizvod UPRs, we have the Machiki, we have guard squads, at combat, we have a lot of junk here. Yeah, it's pretty heavy infantry early on. We also have a KV-2 being brought in, but it's probably going to take another 10 minutes to get to the front line. That's where we'll quite a few T-34s from Alexandra. True. True. Now down to the south, we have four flamethrowers between Ogdemachiki as well as the Sturmaviki. Mm -hmm. Or six if you want to include all the doubles, you know, flamethrowers and all that. Um, oh. Unfortunately for them... There's an awful lot of German infantry, and that stuff is quite good, even in the forests here. And they got Stumgevers. Yep. 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 They're really not as scary as um, what's it called? Uh, it's a stone. Bloody hell! I'm sorry, I have to interrupt you there. We have an yep. AJU Stum 7 coming into the north, and the Seven Dushkas oh. are probably going to take him down. Stum Stum bombing. Stum. Oh my God! Is that going to be amazing or suck? Goes, he shoots, and he's he kills. And he's the probably gonna die here. Oh my god! Probably didn't help it. The discums were moving. They were shooting. That was pretty damn close. That's the really funny. Strafing one to the north too. There's T thirty four forty two got oh, yeah. uh, eighty six there. And so did the IG-18, well, the, well the, the Soviet gun that took him out. I don't know what Sean is doing if he's just come. He has him right next to his commander, so they uh, two self veterancy. Maybe he's using him just like he didn't intend to capture the town, but just wanted to deter anything from coming down the hill. So why not place oh, seven just come tracks? Well, well uh, we do have the Dornier's going to get absolutely pounded. And this JUD7 is going to drop a huge bomb. There we go. Nice. 
Ski Jaegers. Will the Ski Jaegers get the kill on that T-34? No. Oh, reloading the uh, nade. And that's probably going to be a dead KV-2 very soon. Which is such a shame, because that thing is so good. Mm -hmm. Slow, yes, but it's a valuable, valuable resource here. Uh, it's, it's a really scary anti-tank vehicle, but yeah, T-34 just does a drive-by gangster style. Jeez. But down south, um, it has taken its extensive cost here, but uh, there's a couple of rock squads and a T-34 and a Pioneer. Mm -hmm. It is yeah. worth noting, it is still 1311, yes sir. Yeah, it's been a very like, bizarre match so far, and we're not even four minutes in. Certainly true. Certainly true. Part of me almost wants to see what happens if this T-34 is able to get past the infantry to the north. Mm -hmm. I mean, the two guard squads and the, the Vizvod UPRs in support. I'd like to see what happens if they can get in and among all of that anti-aircraft yep. material. Yeah, our, uh, it's only our 27 Gonna be trying to get some gun runs on that T-44, but doesn't line up just correctly. Oh, here we go. He, he's trying to get the side shot, yeah. But doesn't get the kill. Well, he's gonna sit in perpetual stun as these PTRDs just gonna continually just pound at him. <laughs> yep. Yep, yep. Ski Egg is doing a pretty good job holding. And, yeah, infantry support gun on the hill, helping out Sean quite a bit with Dylan said Ski Jaegers. Uh, in the meantime, four squads of Storm uh, Ski Jaegers and a another T-3485 going after this T-34E. Um, I mean, taking this town back is going to be a rough prospect, but taking out this T-34, maybe not? Uh, yeah, I mean... T-34 kills one infantry squad, so a pretty good niche part. The Sturm Ski is going to try and rush in, probably get the grenade off. But it's a very good T-34 placement here from Sean, as it just slows down Alexander a bit by a bit and retaking that town. Buys him True. some time. True. Yeah. I'm going to cluster it. Might actually, he might actually cluster his own T-34, I think. Very close. <laughs> almost, almost, almost a bit of friendly fire, but fortunately for him, doesn't get the kill on his own, dude. Oof, two kills, he's lost two valuable ground attack planes. Oh. The Dornier and the Carpet Bomber both go down. Um, that's, that is not good. And that dinky 20 mil is probably not going to be enough, I think. Got a good amount of damage. He's gonna come right back over that firing arc too, I believe. Mm -hmm. Yep. So I don't know. I think there's probably going to be a kill. Wait, so he's losing out the time to do it. There we go. Oh wow. Man alive. There's such crazy stuff going on here. Yeah, I mean we got. The Stuka doing a bombing run up north. Uh, the Duskums are still just hanging about. And in the middle, we got Sturmski Eagers trying to get uh, possession of the town once again. But Sean's infantry, the Soviet, and they're pretty good at holding. Well, and, and that's what you kind of expect from them. But uh, yeah, I'm trying to figure out what it is that can be done. I, I don't know what that might be. Or Alexander? Yes, well right now he's bringing two JUED-7s. He's trying to crack that first layer of Soviet infantry. I, I can see it, but it's uh, not a high percentage ch you know, success rate here. Yep, I mean it's going to be a blind... Is it a blind bombing run? It's... I'm going to guess it's pretty blind, but... Pretty much going to hit the mark. That go. scream is such a nice little touch to put in there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We got a hundred and twenty million more to be brought in from Alexander. Great choice to try and take the town. He just needs some more infantry to try and throw back up onto the hillside. Problem with him is that a lot of his infantry is being forced into other positions, 
to band-aid these lines. I mean, one thing about this map as well is that there's a good, while there's a lot of open area to allow vehicles to move very quickly from place to place, mm -hmm. um, it also makes rather huge gaps in those lines. And, and yeah. I think Alexander is struggling to really deal with that. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. You don't really have... You don't have a huge amount of availability in general with Ski Jaeger. Like, you got a few of those captured tanks here and there, and especially with the infantry. You don't got a lot of infantry compared to the Soviet spam numbers that Sauna has available to him. Well, it doesn't help when you have a Russian aircraft that just jump on top of your bombers, like... Yeah. I don't even know the right term for this. Yeah. Yeah, Alexander definitely took a very risky approach, it seems, so far, not getting any A-phase fighters. Especially with Ski Eggers, where you have pathetic anti-air. You really want to have some fighters, because he's been losing his ground attack planes. Let's see his, his Yak-9 multi-row bombers. Or multi-row aircraft. Well, and it doesn't help that even the 45 mil over here is just shredding his, his vehicles. Mm-hmm. Sustained rush from the guards could see another flag fall under their control. And yeah, wow, he just he just keeps throwing the same thing at this. Yeah, a lot of enemy one or nine. There we go. He, he needed there like five minutes ago, but uh, he's probably gonna. Alright, that Suka's gonna get out, and there we go. Finally, starting to kill some Soviet air power. Checking this, and the Dushkas for a second. The Dushkas are still with 750 rounds. And the 120 mil is dropping on his own troops. Mm -hmm. It's still, I'm, I'm still super curious about this, this Siskum thing. It's actually been acting as a decent anti-air net, kind of decent for like 70 points. But yeah, Sean, if if you're watching this, please tell me what the reason behind this was. I'm guessing it's to like stop anything from coming from the town, just to the rest and coming down the hill. Well, that was a weird decision. S an SPW yeah. with a uh, Panzer Bisha, um, with Trapschutzen as well, just drove right into the middle of the Soviet lines and was kind of like, eat me! <laughs> I want to die! Existence <laughs> is pain! <laughs> yeah. Alright, right, Mr. B6. <laughs> uh, now we have JU87s desperate to stop. Oh, not able to get there in time. I thought they were maybe going to get there just in the nick of time. But no. Leaving this infantry column coming in with a task of fighting uphill and into forests. And without those skis, I don't know what kind of uh, real bonus they might have here. Yeah. yeah. I really lose a lot of style points not having them nearby. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's going pretty well for Sean so far, considering he doesn't have didn't have the E phase income advantage, he has managed to bleed Alexander down by quite a bit, con considering that. And now we're getting into B and C phase, Sean is going to have the income advantage. Well, I think it was very much assisted by, um, and, I, and I hate to put it so bluntly, but rather mismanagement of the air assets from the Ski Jaeger. Like, yeah. You are not gifted with many weapons in your arsenal, you have to be very, very efficient with your cards. Yep, yep, and Ruski you really want to try to keep all that air power alive. That's really your bread and butter for the most part in terms of addition damage to the enemy, especially once you get into BNC phase, where Sean can start ripping out those IS-2 tanks. Or oh no, he's playing, he's playing 26. I keep thinking he was playing 84th. I apologize for that. That's a bit of a mess up on my part. But yeah, even then they got like KV-85s and. IS run. You know, this is an absolutely Please. ridiculous idea, but can you drop smoke on anti air to prevent it from firing into the air? I think it I think that works. It's not I, something I ever really think to do, but just out of curiosity, I just I don't know. I think that would definitely work, honestly. It it, it makes logical sense. Well, there was a rather brave uh, scout plane that kind of came in to drop off an artillery barrage, and then he absolutely got crushed by this ESU behind the lines. Small surprise, since it's still at 30 mil on it. 
Excuse mm -hmm. me, 37 mil. Ooh, and the, the Cherno Pijak Jackie, whatever, Niki. No idea what that means, and honestly, I feel like we see it so rarely, I don't even remember what that is. A very n new infantry unit, in it was added to a few Soviet divisions. They're pretty much like Ersatz Truppen. It's the Soviet Ersatz. Gotcha. Gotcha, gotcha. Another Dornier 217 yeah. got called in, yes, sir? I believe, like, um. Like Soviet troops who were, or Soviet troops or civilians who were captured from liberated areas, but they were deemed as collaborators. So to redeem themselves, they were, they were you know, forced to put into frontline service in a sense. I'm not 100% sure, but I think that's roughly gig with the channel. Pizza oh, and Nikki's. Judging Ricky. by the weapons loadout, yeah. Would not be surprised by that. Yeah, it's just. Pretty basic uh, Soviet rifle squad. And I think we have, not, I'm not going to say a major bombing attack here, but I think Alexander is desperate to find anything to keep Sean at, an, at arm's length. I'm, I think he's really struggling here. Yeah, his infantry has just not been doing all that great in holding against the Soviets. And he doesn't really have much uh, fly support nearby to really help out. I mean, he has the airplanes flying around, but in terms of on-ground fire support, you know, there hasn't really been any machine gun teams or tanks nearby to help blow stuff up. No, that's the that's the Russians thing, apparently. Mm. Uh, so now Shandrospam is coming down to the south. Yep, we're going to see constant help beacons just kind of placed down there too, until he can get that mortar back online. Yeah, and you've got all the ski eggers trying to clear the forest. Well, he's forcing fallbacks. Hmm. He hasn't. Or yeah, yeah, Sturm Ski is now being brought in. That's definitely going to help out much more compared to the regular Ski Eager counterparts. But yeah, we got uh, infantry. Yeah, yeah sean has got a pretty good hold in this forest, I think. All the Chernos coming in. There's so much stuff that you have to deal with. True, very true. Uh, the north, I think, is pretty much lost. I think he just has to, you know, put a bandaid on that and just push, I would say, really, to take this summit here in the middle. Yeah, yeah. He hasn't done too great. Sean has a real good, like, stranglehold in that barracks area. So, yeah, really, Alexander's best bet is center and probably down south a bit. Also worth noting, we have mortar shells coming towards the anti-aircraft Cool, let's say. Mm -hmm. I'm fascinated to know just how effective these things are going to be. We will watch your barrage with great interest. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of barrage, uh, uh, off map barrage in the center has been going on for a day and a half. Well, part of that's helped by the fact they brought in two recon planes, one after the other, and I don't know if maybe one is exactly the, the same. I don't know. She sure. has two different recon. Uh, Two different off-map artillery planes. Okay, dude, that was like... Surprisingly mild damage there. I was really thinking there's going to be much more going on. Oh, there we go. Killed one. Too busy turning the camera, and that's when a kill happens. That's how it always goes. But mortars are going to be looking for the 120 mil, and unfortunately the 120 mil, as we know... 6,000 range for the 3,000. He's just a teensy bit too close there. Mm -hmm. This is going to hurt. When they, when they see him, it's going to hurt. Now down to the south. The Stug is desperately falling back as an IL-2 makes straight for runs at it. Uh, I think the ME-109 is going to get that kill. No, not immediately anyway. Mm -hmm. It's going to have to come round for round two. But yeah, that Stug took... Took an anti tank fire like a champ. As this mate comes in. That was a good kill. Yeah. 
Uh, up to the north in the meantime, Sean is playing this really rather well. He has lost some infantry here and there, but I feel like this guard comes in, even with one shot, he might be able to take it out from the rear. Yeah, he, he definitely can. That's, that T-34's been really beaten around a bit so far. Oh, oh, this Jaeger's going to be able to just deter yeah. him from moving up. Never mind, he, that one last shot, that one opportunity, and he blew it. He, he blur it. He blur it. Uh, down south, strong ski eggers go. So we have this really weird dichotomy. Usually it's the other way around. We have crazy infantry firepower against airsoft trooping, mm -hmm. and now we have <laughs> the strong eggers against the, the the Soviet airsoft trooping. Yeah, yeah. And Jesus Christ, that is a lot of Soviet airsoft trooping. It's just, I, I know you are very card efficient, but I didn't realize they can be as card efficient. I think you only get one, I think maybe 26, you might get two cards if you am. But nonetheless, that's, that's a lot of, that's just a lot of, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Quantity has a quality all its own. Yeah. And yes, this Dushka over here is going to start changing fire with the SDKFZ 10-4s. I can't help but feel the 82 mils. Yeah, the 82 mils are going to have to shred it. Mm hmm. And the southern person, I mean, that's just a goddamn rule of what's in the guns, essentially. And the storm skis are just getting pounded as they just charge up the road into machine gun fire. Well, the 300 meter range is just killing them right now. Mm hmm. Almost literally. Is that, uh, yeah. Hank was coming on in. This could be, this could be something to kind of. Reverse that. Okay. <laughs> well, that that makes it easier. Yeah, it came in a little bit too late, yo, because a lot of his stuff is pinned down. True. True. I think Alexander's kind of fallen into the... Uh, into the problem that happens a lot with Sturm Ski Jaeger, or just, um, Ski Jaeger division in general. Is that, yeah, infantry is cool, and you got Veteran G on them, and yeah, you got SCGs. Goddamn, when it comes to infantry fight guys, it's just about quantity. It's just about just having more, just regular rifle scratch over your enemy most of the time. And we're seeing that's working very well for Sean. Yes, it is. Now, KV-1's being brought on in, I see IS-1 Comrotis, we have the commander on the field from Sean. In fact, he's been on the field for quite a bit of time now. Mm-hmm. He's been commanding his, uh, Duskum, uh, unit, soon. It's really it. And Dornier getting slapped around a bit by the surviving anti-air. Uh, I don't, I don't know, I think as the, the match has gone on, Alexander has been more and more is the term knee jerk more and more reactionary with yeah. his air power? Yeah, I mean, that Heinkel was definitely a good example. Oh god, all my guys are getting blown up, or all my guys are getting shot up down south. We need to blow up our forest. And now he's got artillery in it, which is good. That's like that's what he needed to do earlier, just drop some arty on it so his infantry can actually get in close. Because up close, his ski, oh, his sturm ski eggers have a pretty good chance. Yes. Your eye kill stuff, but now it's a KV running there. There's a CSU nearby. It's still a lot of Chernos. He's he's gonna need a little bit more firepower. Prefer, preferably like some stugs. He really could use with some stugs. Well, the thing is that honestly, had he stuck a couple of Ski Jaeger squads up front, that'd have been as good mm -hmm. as bringing in all those Ski Jaegers. You bring in the oof, Mortar gets pounded by the Andreyusha, and there goes one of the capable assets he had left. Yeah. A mortar is... I mean, didn't lose the supply truck at least, so that's good for him, but you really need some more artillery on the field. And he got pretty good artillery with, with Ski Eggers. He got, like, some uh, light field guns. Like, mountain base weaponry. Mm -hmm. Like, like with a uh, third factor gun, SD-44. Which have radios on them, so you can get accurate fire. Like, a very rare for to take. Now this is interesting, a KV-1 going it down to the front lines here. Not as big a fan of this, because you know the enemy infantry has 
Panzerfaust, anti-tank grenades, and I think we're going to see that evidence pretty damn quickly. Mm -hmm. I'm, always, I'm always so happy to see KV-1 tanks. That's sure. a... It's, it's an old school, old school Soviet design, you know? Oxy, thick armor layout. True. I thought the word you were going to go for was venerable, but yes, very true. Yeah. Hold up a Panzer Division by itself, you know? Yes, and back when the Panzer Division was just formed of P2s and P3s. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, P3 was a, a astonishingly good tank for its time. It was, what a shame it really yeah. never got a chance to really spread its wings. Yeah, I mean, uh, the Chieftain said this. He's another like tank mm -hmm. YouTuber. Yeah, so the Panzer III is probably the best uh, tank design of the early war. True. Like it was just very solid all around. Did everything very, you needed to do. Uh, IS-1 Camarotti to the north. I mean, the guard squads have been pushed back a little bit. You can see it's a 14-10 as opposed to a 15-9 or anything like that. Unfortunately, there's no kind of consistent victory happening here from Alexander. Yeah, Sean just has too much stuff on the field. Yeah, Alexander just does not have enough firepower to try and move it. Very and, true. Yeah, those guard squads, Chernos, everything is too much stuff. Too much, too much fluff to try to punch through. Well, at this point too, we are seeing that with the economy difference, Alexander is just going to get outproduced. Yeah, and probably at his point of ski egg, he just he do not have good attrition in terms of cards. So he's probably just running out of tanks and infantry at this point. Uh I'm kinda of fascinated to see as many ZSUs as we have. Yeah. But I, I guess when all is said and done, that is the anti air network that we maybe that didn't need or didn't expect, but what was needed. Yes, I mean, Ski Jaeger being a lot of, a lot of your Stuka planes and ground attack planes, having a lot of AA will definitely help out. And honestly, Sean's been doing a really good job so far in trying to neuter uh, Alexander Air, Air Network. Neuter, that's a way, good way to put it. Hmm. Now, unfortunately for the Germans in the north, a KV-1 survived all of those bombs being dropped on it, and the oh jeez, and another concert, <laughs> concert, carpet bomber goes down, and when I wasn't looking, the entire southern flank just collapsed. Oh yeah, Jesus. Jesus, those guards just have a free reign all the way to the town. That is unprecedented. You know, for the home run. I'm waiting for one guy to go and just try to seal off that oh, reinforcement point. It's not going to happen. That's not something you see all that often in SD2. Well, I'm considering how wide oh, these maps it's, are. It's shut off. It. It's shut off. You did it. It is? Yeah, it's shut off. You see, it's like a different color. Oh, okay. Wow. That I think, is... Uh, it's, oh. on, it's back on now. I had to run job, Sean. Yeah, but you know what happened? He forced those three units, those two Ski Jaeger squads yep. and a T-34-85, brought in from the center. To be 42, rather. Yeah. But you put it from the center, that still wastes a good another 20 or 30 seconds there, so... Mm -hmm. This is... Yes, I think it's pretty clear to say that Sean has taken the victory. Certainly a dominant performance. Now, we are going to see Andreyusha from the south launching at this uh, SDKFZ-7-2. Anti-air platform. This guy's been here for quite a bit of time. He's getting a little bit lower on his ammunition. Mm. If he goes down, that's a shame. Oof, a direct hit. That that was unexpected. I didn't expect it to actually kill it outright. Oh, right. Rocket artillery is uh, usually a pretty not direct art form. You're lucky if you get in the same zip code. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Ugh. But uh, we are going to see a couple of German squads out here to pinch off this last little guard intrusion. Um, unfortunately, oh. you can't charge those kinds of squads. They're, just, they're, they're too well-rounded. Mm-hmm. Like, I really guards out flag their life. Exactly. Exactly. 
Like a blocking detachment for sure. Oh. Jeez, yeah, they're doing a really good job of just... Just holding. Well, because he pioneers are not getting close enough to actually use the MP40s. Mm -hmm. And that's that's losing an awful lot of firepower. Yeah. I really I really risk yeah I don't know they they kind of buff the range of SMGs just by like twenty or fifty meters or so because Ski Acres they're very much an SMG focused division with like the Ski Acre Pioneers mm -hmm. and some of the other troops for example. And it's so hard in SC2, and this also applies to Soviets without the Machikis and Tank Tessonikis. It's so hard to get within 100 meters in, in SC2. Extremely difficult. And even if you do with SMG Scrotch, Flamethrowers and Satchel Charge is just going to beat you out at that range. Yep. So, yep. Yeah, so, I kind of risk her and buff him like, just, just a little bit. The Grills are going to be grilling not for long as the match. I'm over. Indeed. Now looking KD. KD is a little bit more. I'm not gonna say even, but um, it could definitely have been much more so. Yep. Like a twelve hundred. Uh, yeah, twelve hundred difference and uh, kills. Well, there was an off map Lotta from the German side that had pretty good efficiency overall. Oh yeah. You know, Lots actually, of kills. One thing I'm noticing here is that there are very few anti tank guns on the German side. One. Yeah. He doesn't really have like many pack 40s or stuff. I see one dead pack 30, uh, pack 38. Mm hmm. Or 36, whatever it is, I'm sorry. But yeah. um, that's it. Nothing else got kills. I mean, I'm, part of me is really kind of wondering. I know the 36 is a little bit underpowered by comparison. Mm -hmm. But um, what happens if that is, let's say, more active? If there's more of them, that is. I definitely would have a better chance killing, killing the tanks. It would, to be fair, during like a early stages of the match, it wasn't really Sean's tanks that were a problem. It was just the amount of infantry. That is also true. Um, so... Word to the wise, I guess, going into the next time, if you're going to play Ski Jaeger, do two things. One, preserve your air assets, and two, I don't know, bring in more artillery? Yeah, yeah, he definitely could have used more RT. He just needed more fire support to support the actual Jaegers to begin with, because a lot of the time, yeah, just fighting by themselves, and against, against the, you know, the Soviet rave tactics, yeah, you know... Of that you play most of the time with the guard spam and Cherno spam and all of that. You really need to have some fire support on your side to even the odds out, so to speak. True, and if nothing else, at least slow down the wave until the tide can ebb back that direction. Mm -hmm. But in uh, in any case, um, that last replay was from the first. Okay, yeah, so folks, as we mentioned on Tuesday, that replay that we saw on Tuesday and today as well was from an official SD2 tournament put together by Eugen, so we want to finally doff our hats a little bit to Eugen for getting to going on the community interaction. Hopefully, we're going to see more of that kind of material in the next several weeks. Um, I know people have sent me a couple of replays in the last few days. Uh, hopefully, we might be able to feature your guys' work, but for the time being, Ren, any final thoughts for our players out there? It's an also East... And there's an Orsa rest. Why is there not an Orsa north and an Orsa south? Well, why is there not it is Orsa central? north. That is Orsa north. So we is got Orsa east central? and Orsa north. Uh huh. Is there an Orsa? There is no Orsa rest. And there is no Orsa south. And I, I want to say it's just because the rest of the campaign just swept past Orsa that quickly? Yeah, I'm guessing so, because the Soviets came in from like the north and the east. They probably just thought, yeah, okay, it does make a lot of sense, actually. You don't really well, fight behind the town that you already captured, because the Germans already fled. Strategically retreated, please. Yeah, yeah, and they kept doing that for another year. <laughs> Touche. Uh, but alright, folks, of course, as always, if you like what you see, please feel free to uh, let us know. But I guess until next time, I'm Conor Work. Rang Roo, take it easy.